Retired Comelec Commissioner Rowena Guanzon hits her former colleague Aimee Ferolino over the dismissal of a consolidated disqualification case against presidential candidate Bongbong Marcos. In a tweet, Guanzon says Ferolino's resolution is a must-read for lawyers and non-lawyers for its atrocious logic and that it is fraught with grammatical and typographical errors. Guanzon also takes exception to the finding that Marcos Jr. did not commit a crime involving moral turpitude when he failed to file his income tax returns in the 1980s. The ruling reads, The failure to file tax returns is not inherently wrong in the absence of a law punishing it. Guanzon questions the logic in the statement, noting that Marcos Jr. was convicted by the trial court and the Court of Appeals for his repeated non-filing of income tax returns. She asks, if there is no law punishing the non-filing of ITR, why was Marcos Jr. convicted then? Guanzon also posts a lengthy take on her Facebook account, saying Ferolino chose to turn a blind eye to the circumstances surrounding Marcos Jr.'s offense. Guanzon mandatorily retired from the poll body in early February. While Guanzon made public her separate opinion and vote to disqualify Marcos Jr. before her retirement, her vote was not counted in the ruling as it was released only over a week after she left Comelec. The Gachalians of Valenzuela City and Governor John Vicremulia of Cavite endorsed presidential candidate Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. Valenzuela has a strong voter base of 400,000, while Cavite is the second most vote-rich province. Ako po si Rex Gachalian, punong lungsod ng dakilang siyudad ng Valenzuela City, at suportado ko ang ating susunod na Pangulo, BBM! The son of the late dictator is clearly the one to beat three months before the elections, as his recent survey ratings breach 50%. Lito Banayo, campaign manager of presidential candidate Isko Moreno, tells ANC Head Start, Marcos Jr. is the common enemy. Banayo notes, Marcos Jr. is the most divisive figure. He adds, while the strategy of shunning critical media and avoiding as many interviews as possible is working for now, it may have a negative impact down the road on voters who don't like candidates who do not face their opponents. Marcos spokesperson Vic Rodriguez and his national campaign manager Benhur Abalos both stick to a disciplined branding. Their candidate is a unifier who is not out to make enemies. But compared to the other tandems, Marcos has not comprehensively discussed a platform. He mentioned only in passing plans to boost agriculture, tourism, and small businesses. Marcos and his allies boast of his experience as governor, congressman, and senator, but Ilocos Norte residents say he was an absentee leader. Need more context, clarity, and perspective? Get the full picture with Rappler Plus. With exclusive content and events, you'll get an opportunity to discuss issues with reporters, experts, and featured guests while helping Rappler continue its fearless journalism. Join now. The Supreme Court clears Philippine Daily Inquirer journalists in a libel case filed by former Senator Juan Ponce Enrile over a 2001 Marcos ill-gotten wealth story. Enrile initially won at a trial court in 2013 and again in 2016 at the Court of Appeals, which ordered the journalists to pay a total of 1.3 million pesos in damages and attorney's fees. But in a decision promulgated on July 14, 2021 but released only on February 8, the first division reversed and set aside the CA decision. Associate Justice Benjamin Kagiwa says, There is no proof that the publication of the subject article was made to harass, vex, or humiliate Enrile. He adds, the article was a straightforward narration, a plain report that a person said this, although it was erroneously attributed to a person who did not utter the statements. The case is rooted in a story written by Donna Cueto and Donna Pazibugan on the settlement of the Coco Levy funds that the Inquirer published on December 4, 2001. The Coco Levy funds are recovered funds from late dictator Ferdinand Marcos's cronies, who amassed ill-gotten wealth from the taxes of coconut farmers during the dictatorship. The funds were supposed to benefit coconut farmers. 
The Inquirer report said the Presidential Commission on Good Government opposed the settlement, saying it would allow Marcos cronies to keep their plundered loot. The Inquirer story named the late Eduardo Danding Cojuanco, Clara Lobregat, and Enrile as the cronies. Former PCGG chairperson Heidi Yorak disowned the statement, but it was clarified later that it was former Commissioner Ruben Carranza who issued the statement to journalists. As for Enrile, the Supreme Court says, as a public official, the story that named him is undoubtedly a matter of public interest. Britain's Prince Harry says Thursday, February 10, he feels compelled to try to finish the work of his late mother, Princess Diana, in tackling HIV and the stigma around it. I feel obligated to try and continue that as much as possible. I could never fill her shoes, especially in this particular space, because of what she did and what she stood for, and how vocal she was about this issue. Diana famously shook hands with AIDS patients at a London hospital in 1987. This was seen as a milestone in the battle against the stigma surrounding people with the virus. Harry has also become a prominent HIV and AIDS campaigner. Meantime, Harry's father and Britain's Prince Charles tests positive for COVID-19 for the second time. His office confirms Thursday, February 10, the heir to the throne contracted the disease again and is currently self-isolating. There was no immediate comment on his condition. Charles said in December, both he and his wife Camilla received their COVID-19 booster shots. The couple previously tested positive in March 2020 when he said he had been lucky to have suffered only mild symptoms. Crash landing on new stars Hyun Bin and Sonia Jin are engaged. The couple shares the news on their Instagram accounts, with Hyun Bin posting from the official account of his agency, Vast Entertainment. In his post, Hyun Bin says, the engagement was the most important decision of his life. Meanwhile, sharing a photo of a tiny bridal gown on her Instagram, Sonia Jin says she found someone to spend the rest of her life with. The pair first confirmed their relationship on January 1, 2021. They are known for starring in the hit K-drama Crash Landing on You, which ran from December 2019 to February 2020. In the series, Hyun Bin played a member of the North Korean military, while Sonia Jin played a South Korean heiress who crash lands in North Korea while paragliding. On the show, their characters fall in love. <laughs>